Within today's tutorial you're going to be learning on how to create a graph GAN. You know those pictures and those symbols and those kind of logos that you can put onto your Afghans. Just be aware that you still need to follow the copyright and trademark laws associated to making any kind of graph GANs. And so now it's time to create your own graphs and there are several ways of doing so. You can do it old school, you can do it new school, <laughs> it doesn't matter which way you do it. But just remember that you have to honor the copyright and trademark laws to not do anything that you're not allowed to do when it comes to making trademark logos on top of your projects. So what we want to do then is that we're looking at a graph and one thing that you need to really pay attention to is that and this one is especially bad in mine. So I have created the entire alphabet, all the numbers, the symbols and upper and lower case and I found with my test samples that having one single crochet standing by itself is not very effective and in actual fact it doesn't look good at all. So if you look at my actual project that I did you can see that the M is a lot more thicker in comparison to the actual project that was available. So what you're gonna do is if you're going on the crochetcrab.com and you're using these, what I need you to do is that to the left of the actual diagrams here, you will notice that there's somewhat shaded boxes in different shades because the pixelation never caught up in everything. You wanna look carefully to where it's somewhat shaded and fill it in. For example right here, this is shaded but it was really hard to tell and I noticed it when I was on top of my desk so I shaded it in just to make sure that I'm not gonna miss the story. For my particular uh, fonts that I have on my website, you need to add two extra boxes to every one of the items going to the left. Here, this is just because it's shaded and it was just hard to tell. So what I, if you do that, what happens is that you can thicken it. So you could go in both directions of going on the other side but then you'll lose this whole M right in the middle. So no matter what letters that you're picking up to when you're making these, you need to make sure that the outline of whatever you're doing is at least three, at least three um, stitches across in order to make it effective. Once it gets down to one it gets really sketchy. And so you'll notice that when a lot of people do these online is that you'll notice that their outlines are really quite thick and that's the reason for it because you really do need it for these kind of ideas. You gotta rethink about this is back in the 1980s and, and early 90s when we had dot matrix printers. So let me take you up to the computer and I'll show you how to do other ways of making these graphs. To find the letters that you're looking for when it comes to making your graphs, all you just need to do is go to the search button right here. And then say your name is Kathy with the, with the C, then all you can just say is capital, we're gonna say capital because it's a large letter, capital C, put it into the search and the search button should actually bring up C. So there it is here. So you just have to click onto the article when you get there. When you get to the article, just scroll down just like so. You will notice advertising that is in the article. That will not print out when you're actually printing this. To print out the graph, all you just need to do is push print. You will notice down here that there's other suggested letters that are based on that one and you'll notice that they're all in uppercase. So if you wanna make more words, you can simply do that or just go back to the search button on the top here and enter in a different letter. To print, you're just gonna push this green button right here and it will bring it up. Here's exactly what it will look like, send it off to the printer and that's exactly what I've been using throughout the intros of this video. Another way to do a graft is that you can bring up your particular logo into a Photoshop program just like so. And all I want to do then is that I want to take the logo and I want to print it. So I just want to print onto one page and it's going to bring up some print options. You will notice that it appears the full size of the page in a landscape mode. All I just want to do is click, pr or click print on that and send it off to my printer as is. But we're not quite done with that because I have another uh, clue to show you in order to create the graph. In the link of the more information of this video you will find a direct link for the PDF for this particular graph. Now what you're going to be finding today is that each one of the blue represents 20 particular stitches going across. So you have 20, 20, 20. This graph here is 140 stitches wide by 200 stitches deep just like so. So to put this on top of the other logo that we had been working on, all I want to do is just then click print to be able to print this again and send this off to my printer as is. 
So now I'm going to superimpose one over top of the other. Now I don't like to ruin my image like I have here just in case I screwed up. So I take an extra photocopy of it just to make sure that I have an extra on the side just in case. And I wanna make sure that I got my copy on. It's one and I make that. If you screw up it just saves you time to be able to do it later and it's something for a backup as well. So I'm gonna keep my logo safe just in case. So now what I want to do is that I want to put this back into the paper feeder and you got to remember what side is up and what side is down and it doesn't matter which way that you have it turned. The graph is equal on either side. So I want to put that back in and I want to put my graph paper into the photocopy element as well and I want to make sure I do a color print if it's just easier. If you don't have color it's okay too and I want to make sure I'm doing a copy and I do it. So basically what I've just done now is that this is gonna photocopy the graph on top of my logo so that I have a working copy to use. So I've now just pressed print to the actual graph itself and I have my paper already in so when it comes out cross my fingers that the graph should be on top of my logo and then I'm ready to that and crochet with this. So voila, here it is and this is a graph ready to go. We still have to do a little bit final touches with this graph before we get started but this is a great starting point. Another technique that you can do and this is your third up. Another technique that you can do is that in the more information link of the video there will also be a pattern just like so. So it will be an actual picture. What you can do is you can bring it up into your Photoshop or your kind of uh, artistic programs whatever you have and then essentially what you can just do for example you can just go and look at logos and etc and you can push these logos on top. So for example say that I want to do um, I'm thinking of a queen's crown just like so. So I'm gonna grab a queen's crown. I wanna make sure it's in a color that I can actually see well. So I'll do it in red and all I can just do is that I can put the queen's crown over top just like this and I can put her right into the center just kind of eye it up like this. But you will realize that she is missing the graph behind. So all you just have to do at this point is just make her somewhat see throughable so transparent and basically the image will then appear and you will basically have the graph to be able to make an afghan just like so. So you can do this the same even with letters. So if you wanna say for example that you are the queen. So you can say queen. You can do any kinds of fonts that you wanna do. You can make up your own artwork. Like so. So now you have the queen and essentially you need to make her opaque as well. So the other one was 47%. I wanna make this one 47% as well. So that basically you can see where the letters are but you can also see the graph. All you just need to do then at this point is just send this off to the printer. So you just click print. Okay, you wanna make sure that the orientation is proper. So I wanna make sure that she is looking fine. So I just have to adjust my settings here to portrait mode just like so and then essentially I can send her off to the printer once it's all looking fabulous. So I could just size her up on top of my printer paper. Make sure she fits. I want as much of the graph as that I can and once you have that established you can just print that off and essentially you have your own artwork and you can create anything that you want. Another way to make graphs is that you will notice that when I did these a year or so ago you'll notice that I put digits on here and I put tape lines and matching things together. I did that on purpose because I felt to my point of view at that time if people really wanted to mix and match letters they could do so. So what I have here is actually my letters that I have from my website and I printed out one of each and you can see that I've cut my items here. But all I just did is I matched up the lines so I decided that there was gonna be two boxes in between each one of the fonts that we have and so essentially I just cut my lines and I taped everything together so it looks like a solid piece. So if I was to do a banner for example and just to give you an insight if the M equals this size here by the size of my hands you gotta think about my whole name it would probably be about five feet long or actually there's five yeah about five feet long if I was to do my banner just like so. And so if you're doing an afghan and you wanted to put a, a nickname or anything you can use the same concept by just following along and doing it just like so. 
Just remember that if you are adding this to an afghan that is not already a grafgan, you gotta make sure that you're starting off in the proper way that the letters will be on the front side of the afghan if there is such a thing. And you don't wanna make sure that you put it on and your letters are all backwards. So as I said before is that I went in and I filled in two extra boxes of each one of the letters and this is an overview to how it will look. The K is really kind of funky. This whole font is kind of funky. I love it actually and it's unpredictable and it's really neat. So the K kind of looks a little weird but you know you just have to go with it and see how it's gonna turn out. Um, overall it'd be really easy to be able to do this project uh, especially in the middle section here and it'd be a lot of fun. The other thing that you cannot forget is that you have your own creativity as well. So for example say I have an eye here and this is exactly how it appears on the printer and I did so. There's nothing wrong with you just kind of like doing a heart. So you could just uh, lightly draw a heart like so and then just do it probably in pencil. And then all you're just going to do is that you're just gonna fill in the boxes where the heart would appear and just like so. And so you can actually make your own pattern on top of a pattern. Like so you just gotta look for where everything is, is happening. You have to make a decision though at this point if you're gonna do this right where like this is going through half a box you have to decide whether you're gonna come back one box or you're going to stay on the box. You just gotta make sure that whatever you do is, is gonna look right. And this is where you would make that decision in order to do so. So you can basically just improvise anything that you wanted to uh, just by you know your own creativity at that. I would look for items that are being symmetrical so if I'm gonna fill in this box make sure you fill in the one on the other side just to make it look all even and then you can add anything that you want when it comes to your own creativity on top of an existing pattern and then just commit to it once you get that point. So my logo has been printed and all I just want to do is that I wanna make sure that I'm kinda of going to follow along this properly. So I can see that there's three boxes here and three here and what I would do is take an outline of a pen or a pencil and just highlight the boxes that you are intending on using like so. because there's gonna be some of these letters where it's halfway through a box. So this is where you would actually start and really just refine what you're looking for and this is where you would make changes. So you will notice that my M that I did originally that um, it may look slightly different. You can improvise a little bit based on what you're seeing if you really don't like um, like this being so flat. I could have actually just went in up one more just right in the middle just to make it kind of look a little more interesting but you will just continue to go around. It's easier to do it right here than it is to start second guessing yourself by saying okay did I catch that one that it looks like it's half shaded but it's really not. So you wanna make sure that at this point is that you're committing to whatever boxes that you really want for your particular logo. Now just out of my own personal preference. Now I know with myself that working with two single crochets is gonna be really thin so I would not hesitate to do it and just use my own creativity and do one extra box that even though it's in the fuchsia just to thicken it up just a little more just to make this pattern a lot more easier to manage. So this is where you can really start thickening stuff up. Um, say you like bubble letters you can just continually just change things here and there in order to make it work for your particular idea. And I'd strongly recommend you use pencils so just in case you're having a change of mind or anything that you wish you can do so at that time. So once you're ready to go uh, what I would do is label up these. If you're using the Crochet Crowds uh, graph as found just remember that each one of these boxes that you can see in the bigger box is actually 20 squares across 20 is high. So I would just label these easier just in case you need to count, uh, keep count on where you are on this particular project. So that's it. This is how I would create a graph or any other kind of graphs that you're looking for.